What's up, War Report family? It's your boy C Dub here, joined by B Will, as well as Dustin of the Up Tempo Pod. A day is in the books. 2024. A day is in the books. The offense actually scored 28 points. We'll talk about how Auburn got there. Special teams, maybe. Uh, <laughs> Auburn wins. Uh, the offense wins 28-27. Uh, do us a favor, guys. Before we get into this, we got a good post a day reaction for you. We want you to share this content, smash that like button, subscribe if you are new to the channel. Want to take some time to shout out before we get into instant thoughts. Uh, sponsor here, Bet US, guys. Bet US is one of our newest sponsors, guys. They do 24 hours issued payouts. 125% sign up bonus up to 2500 bucks. Use the link in the description of this video and they have excellent 24 hour customer service. Definitely want to show some love to our sponsor Bet U S. Guys, you watched A Day. Obviously, it was the Towns Mago show. Uh he went 6 of 6 accounting for uh 18. Was that right? Do I have that right? Seven for seven. Seven for seven. So he actually had 20, 21 uh, of the 28. Three-fourths of 75% of Auburn's scoring came from him. Thoughts about – let's talk about the format. Let's talk about the format of A-Day, 10-minute quarters that ran until the final two minutes of each half. What did y'all think about the format? Kind of a kind of a repeat of what they did last year. Thoughts, gentlemen? I didn't mind it. I, did, I didn't mind it. I thought it was a good setup. Defense, this is a lead protected, which is kind of what you want your defense to be primed to do. And also, offense, hey, got a hill to climb out of. Go get it. Which, if there's any situation we might be finding ourselves in this season, that might be it. So yeah. not not because I'm down on our, our defense. I, I think our defense, just based on the, the glimpses we got, will be solid. But I think our offense might, might have some uh, – uphill battles to climb and uh <laughs> yeah yeah the format was good it's probably the situation we're going to find ourselves most in this season so I we'll talk more about good. the offense in a minute uh we'll elaborate on that as well as defense uh dustin your thoughts about format what you saw uh good weather this time i yeah, think yeah. that was that's a huge positive about this is that we actually had decent weather this year but you're beautiful day yeah yeah we got to see him air it out and that's kind of what i think everybody wanted to see i think we wanted to see every quarterback get the opportunity to throw it around a little bit i thought that all four quarterbacks got the fair opportunity to and as far as like the formats i mean everybody does the spring game differently so you know i, I don't i don't really care too much we got in there we got to see some things we got some reps and i think we got some answers so you know i'm all happy with it and like you said man good weather decent crowd on hand so i thought that the uh they could have done a little bit better job of communicating to everybody that was there. That one o'clock was going to be like a, a endo period or, you know, the warm up period because a lot of people mm -hmm. were, were tweeting from the stadium, Hey, I thought we were starting at one here. Um, right. But, you know, other than that, man, whatever. And I hope everybody's going to get over there to the baseball game now, Plainsman, and support, support the boys because we got a big series that we need to win. Yeah, for sure. For sure. For sure. Well, let's talk about it. Uh, the offense only scored one touchdown. That touchdown came in the second half of A Day. A nice throw from Peyton Thorne to Cam Coleman. Uh, we got to see Cam Coleman on a few uh, big plays there. The first one was a long shot uh, by Hank Brown, a 50-yarder. He made it a beautiful catch over his shoulder uh, in the first half. And then, of course, he uh, contributed the only touchdown of the offense for the game. Let's talk about quarterbacks and QB play. This is what people are here to see. This is what people showed up for 8-8 to see. Yeah. I'll start with you, B. Will, your thoughts on QB play? Um, it was mediocre. QB play was mediocre. I didn't see – it's always refreshing to hear Hugh Freeze talk on the sideline. I don't know if y'all remember, but last A-Day, he was on the mic while uh, T.J. Finley was in, right? He was like, come on, like, what are you doing right there? That's not your game. He's He's coaching just like he would if he was not on camera. And there was one in particular. It was a play where I think the safety blitzed and, and – and stopped the play, so it went down as a sack. And he was like, yeah, he should have seen that, talking about Peyton Thorne, who was in at the time. How awareness of the game, of the defense, of what's going on, if there's anywhere where I expect somebody who has played four years of football to have an advantage, that's it. Like, that that's 
that's a given. That's not grading you on a curve there. You've started three years. You've been on the college campus for four. Identify, recognize, and adjust. That's the, the same thing we saw last season that he didn't do several times and would end up in sacks or rush plays or whatever it was. I could – we could say, oh, look at these throws that he made. I, one – I think his first throw, it was. It seemed like a very lazy kind of a little shallow out to, to Cam Coleman, and Cam Coleman caught it, but – the pass wasn't great, so he went down for like two yards or something. Um, Peyton Thorne seems to be much of the same guy. I haven't seen any great strides. I didn't expect to see any great strides. I think he just is what he is. But it's very clear that Cam Coleman can cover some transgressions here with what he can do. So our quarterbacks are going to look better than they would otherwise because our wide receiver talent has been improved. But I still think uh, Peyton Thorne looks mediocre. Hank Brown and Holden Garner both were like, I I, I want to know where they call pass plays or they just like, ah, this might be RPO, but I'm about to sling this thing. Like, that's one thing I want to go back when, when I get a chance to break it down and see, because they look like I'm going to sling it. Like, that's what they wanted to do. And I don't think much of this, this game was going to be about getting these real detailed looks. It's about, hey, just run what we tell you to run make good decisions, and I think the coaches will be happy with that. But those two guys didn't seem to do much, but, yeah, I'm going to sling this thing. <laughs> and I honestly like to see it because we didn't get to push the ball much uh, downfield much last year. So whenever we do, I like to see it from those guys. I don't know what to make of what they did, though. Like, I, I just don't. It's, it's really hard to say. I don't know what was called. I don't, I don't know where you had an advantage, and I don't know if the coaches were – trying. are you trying to game the defense? Like, were we doing that on offense to defense? You know what I mean? Like – was the defense going to be in stable, uh, um, um, just base, and, and was the offense mostly in just base and running it? So we don't know much about what the, the context was, and also with them having played so little as starters, I didn't have high expectations. I just wanted to see them be accurate. I did see some accurate throws. I, I saw some inaccurate throws, and I still don't know what to make of their performance yet. So overall, Walker White looked – as rough as you expect a true freshman to look, a couple of ooh throws and a couple of ah throws as well. So um, overall, I'd say mediocre. Nobody looked pinpoint perfect. Nobody looked smooth and, and crisp with every throw. And I didn't expect that. So it, I would have loved to be surprised, but I wasn't. It's just where we're at right now. And it's still spring. Let's be, it is still spring. They This wasn't going to look like a fine tuned machine in the spring. So it didn't look – nobody looked outright awful. I do think that's that's a that's a bonus, right? That's, that's okay. a plus. Yeah. So, mediocre, but mediocre is kind of what I expected. So, Dustin, your thoughts about what you saw with the QB play? Yeah, I agree with Big Will as far as the expectations. I wasn't expecting anybody to come out and just kill it, you know. Um, and we are transitioning from Philip Montgomery to the Hugh Free system, however much of a transition that really is. And the important thing, too, is to remember is Peyton Thorne ran for over 500 yards last year. You're in a scrimmage situation where he's not live. So, like, how much does that kind of play into what's going on as far as what the defense is thinking? Like, no, and he can't really do the R part of the RPO. Um, so I, I kind of take that in consideration looking at all the quarterbacks in general. But I think that the depth chart, as far as what we've been told, kind of played out as such. Like, to me, PT looked like number one. Hank Brown looked like number two. And I, I really wonder if we just saw the last of Holden in an Auburn uniform. It just didn't really look yeah, that yeah. impressive, right? <clears throat> um, and it does. It definitely doesn't look – it looks like he's been taken – overtaken by the younger guy for the QB2 spot now. Um, positives from the passing game? Man, like you got guys like B will said that can help your quarterback out. Yeah. Cam Brown was coming back to the football, being aggressive, making plays. Um, and I, we, you know, for a couple of springs now, we've heard like Cam Brown's that guy, Cam Brown's that guy, and then we don't see it when it comes time when the lights come on. Cam Brown, I know, I know it's a spring game, but he looked like a dude today, and then. Cam Coleman is Cam Coleman. It is as advertised. The hype is real. None of that's fake. Like it's all you can't overhype it, man. Like that's mm -hmm. that's a first round NFL wide receiver. Mm -hmm. That's what that looks like. Um, and he's gonna help out. He's gonna help our, you know, help the, the QBs out tremendously. And then I know that people are kind of concerned about the rushing attack today. But again, when the quarterback isn't live in an RPO right. system. Right. That kind of changes like what the D line kind of knows what's up. I, mean, I just don't think right. you're going to run the ball that well in that scenario. Um, so 
you know, nothing that's like crazy. But I will say this for Peyton Thorne. Um, what he couldn't have was a terrible day. Like right. Hugh, Hugh Freeze talking him up all week, saying he's the number one guy. He did the sit down with Josh Pate where he said Peyton Thorne's clearly kind of taking that next step. A lot of people watch Josh Pate. And then if you would have came out today and been like five for 12 and thrown picks and all that kind of stuff, right. didn't do any of that, protected the football. Um, didn't look awesome, but didn't look bad. So yeah. overall, man, I think it was like a, like a good day. I mean, I'm not going to. I'm not concerned, like overly concerned about anything. My opinion didn't change that much, I guess, right. other than like, hey, I think we improved out there at the wideout spot. And Robert mm-hmm. Lewis is a guy too, man. He made some plays. So I am excited about that part of it. Like, all right, I think, you know, Jair Shorter, Shane Hooks, like there's an improvement with guys like Cam Cole and Robert Lewis. There's guys out there on the outside now that can help pick up Peyton Thorne's play a little bit. Uh. I'll add my thoughts on this. I think this is everything Hugh Freeze has been saying around spring. He basically said that Peyton Thorne was the most consistent. Kind of looked like that today. He was the most consistent. And one of the things we asked was, what does consistent mean? Right? Does that mean that he's – because he didn't say that Peyton Thorne's out here killing it in so many words. He just (laughs) said he was the most (laughs) consistent QB. That's accurate to what we saw today. Uh, Holden Gurner, I think he's gone, guys. I, I think he's going to transfer yeah, out of here. I, and the reason why I say yeah. that is the offense does – it looks different when Holden is out there on the mm-hmm. field. There's not a lot of RPO. He's just dropping back and passing. And he he's not exactly uh, – from from his play and what I saw, not really – he wouldn't put fear in me if I, was a, if I was a defensive coordinator in terms of what he can do passing the ball. Talented player. But the offense isn't even what Hugh Freeze and Derek Nixka wants to run when Holden Gurner is out there. I just don't know if he fits moving forward. And to me, that puts Hank Brown squarely in at QB2 moving forward. We'll wait well, to me, see what happens there. But go ahead. So, I, so I was going to ask, because Hank Brown looks – his skill set looks identical to Holden Gurner, honestly. He doesn't look like a, a, a mobile guy. I see the value of PT running. PT was effective running last year. Sure. And he, there was a couple times where, honestly, I was like, yeah, they're not going to really tackle you here. But, hey, you're wide open. Like, yeah, that scramble, you would have got seven yards on that run. That skill set is still there. If he can see guys who are bearing down on his wide receivers and make a, a slightly sharper throw, then, yeah, we're two, three wins better automatically because he can still run it. And, um, you know, his passing, assume that it improves because we got better wide receivers. But if you don't think Holden Garner's a good fit, do you think Hank Brown's a good fit? Because I think they're the same guy as far as big arms, willing to throw, not very mobile. What I will say to that is I think Hank Brown has played in an offense like this, whereas Holden Gurner did not coming out of high school. I think this has been a huge adjustment for Holden Gurner because you got to remember he was recruited by the previous coaching staff, which ran a completely different offense. He was a Brian Harson guy, mm-hmm. expected to run a Brian Harson offense. I mm-hmm. think this has been a huge adjustment for him and when you bring in a kid who, to your point, has a similar skill set but is more familiar playing in this offense, I think the learning curve isn't as steep for Hank Brown as it would be for a Holden Gurner, as far as I'm right. concerned. So I think that's been kind of the difference there. Even with a guy like Walker White, again, he looks like a freshman. Yeah. I expect him to look like and, – and really and truly, Walker White, which is out there – soaking it take soaking everything in just happy right. to be there right we're not expecting much from him and if he shows us something all that's going to do is make us even more excited for the future uh he is the future but again i think the focus was on the first three quarterbacks and again i think we're right where hugh freeze has said peyton thorn is has been the most consistent obviously he's i mean i'm curious to see what they do with him in the fall how the offense looks as it begins to take shape I wanted to see him lead. Uh, he led a, a scoring drive. I expected to see two. Mike G said three on Wednesday, so he fell short of our expectations there. Uh, but he didn't put the ball on the ground. Didn't 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 throw a pick. Uh, so hopefully the coaching staff can continue to build on some of the things that they liked in Peyton Thorne through spring, going into summer and fall. Uh, let's let's talk about the trenches. And let's get into the defense. DJ Durkin's defense. The the defense came out to play. They did. did, Auburn didn't really try to do a whole lot through the ground, if we be honest. 
But when they did try to run, Auburn was flying to the to the ball. And uh, again, this is something that uh, DJ Durkin's defense has been known for, a great front seven, flying to the ball. Auburn looked very active in the run defense. You got to remember, this was a concern last spring because Auburn was running pretty well last spring. Um, obviously, that's all they could do with the weather. Mm -hmm. But our thoughts about the defense – as it pertains to the offense, are we concerned offensively? Because this is one of those tough things to evaluate. Should we be concerned with the offensive line trying to jail, or is Auburn's defensive run defense appears to be taking a step forward? I'll start with you, Dustin. Um, I think that I'm not going to take too much away from today as that goes, because like I said, with the RPO system, I just think that them knowing the quarterback is not live makes a, di a big difference on sure. kind of what goes on down there. Um, and that being said, we've heard all camp about how the O-line has been strong. And I still have questions about our personnel on the interior defensive line. Now, so, and Hugh has said in multiple press conferences now, he said in this second portal window, I need to go out and get two interior defensive linemen. He, he said it twice. Yeah. So, yeah. so that tells you right there where his mind is with that. He feels like we're not quite where we need to be there. There's young guys there, man. Listen, TJ Lindsay, I love him. Like all the guys that we signed, Malik blocked it. I think he's going to contribute early as a freshman. Like there's guys down there, but you know, Hugh said it today. I'm, I'm counting on more young guys than I kind of want to be doing, but that's just the position that the roster is in. I thought that uh, like, I'm a, I'm a big fan of the DJ Dirk and hire. And I think that when you go back to when Hugh freeze took over, linebacker was a position that we looked at and we were really concerned about. And boy, did Josh Aldridge flip that in that recruiting class. DJ Barber with two big stops down mm -hmm. on the goal line. Yeah. He is the most under, he is the most underrated mm -hmm. player in the class that we just signed. Mm -hmm. I say it on our podcast all the time. DJ Barber wakes up and drinks tackling fuel every <laughs> single day. That's, that's, that's what, that's what the boy does. Okay. So the Phillips is going to be a beast down there by the time it's all over. Jamonte Waller can do his thing. There's a lot of talent. The Williams kid out of North Carolina that we flipped at the end of the cycle, making waves early. There's a lot of talent down there. Um, we all expect Keldrick Falk to have an all sec type mm -hmm. season. He had the big third down stop on right. the first yeah. drive of the game. And then it kind of seemed like they were like, all right, dude, we already know what you can do. Right. There's no really no point in having you out here much longer. So it's just I'm excited. You know, Jalen McLeod made a couple big plays. Can he stay healthy? Um, and Lee made a good play on the long yeah, bomb. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. So like at the trenches, I think that I think our offensive line is going to be better than what it was last year. I think you're going to have one of the best centers in the league. Um, I think the Percy Lewis addition was great. I think that depth wise on the O line, you're in a better spot than you've been in the last four or five years. I'm not going to look at today and go, uh oh, I'm super worried about the D line because of A day or the O line, excuse me, because of A day all of a sudden. Um, my, my opinion on the trenches hasn't changed too much. I am impressed with some individual performance, though, on the defensive line. And I just think that for our defensive line this year, there's going to be ups and downs, man, because there's going to be a lot of young, a lot of young guys like, Look, just look at Keldrick. You, we all saw the talent last year, and he had games where he really popped, and then he had games where he didn't because you don't necessarily want to be in a position where you're counting on that many young cats on the line of scrimmage in the SEC. But that's just that's where we're at. So I think it's you know I think it's kind of a mixed bag. But what I do think is that the coaching staff on the defense overall, like having DJ Durkin over there. And then having Josh Aldridge working with the edges, I like that combination. And look, when you look at the jump that Eugene Asante made last year, when I think that we got every single ounce of talent that you could out of the kid, uh, Larry Nixon, that came from North Texas. Mm -hmm. Like yes. I, I trust Josh Aldridge is what I'm saying now. He's shown me enough on the recruiting trail and on the field. Mm -hmm. And I think that DJ Durkin can do his thing. And then I thought you saw a lot of young talent popping in the back end today. Zach Gethard recruited that position well for years, and now he's handing it over to Charles freaking Kelly, dude. Like yeah. young talent that's flying around the ball out there. Um so I'm not I'm not going to be overly concerned with anything that I saw today. I just I like a lot of the individual performances. And look, I've heard good things about Robert Woodyard. He made that nice play on third yes. down on the edge. If yes. he can be that guy, Stop that Dark can be West, Dark West can get outside. Look, mm -hmm. man, he looks a lot leaner. He looked a lot quicker than he did last year on that play right there. If he's a guy that can get down there and wreck some havoc as well, just young pieces that you should be excited about. 
B will, uh, what did you think about D? I, I saw, I saw DJ bringing some pressure. I saw some stunts. I saw him yeah, actually dialing up some stuff for a spray <laughs> game. We didn't look vanilla. He was trying to call a defense. Um, I mean, you kind of, I like to see that from a defensive coordinator. You know, like, yeah. hey, yeah, coach, yeah, yeah, we know. Just base, just base. You gotta go take his head off right now. <laughs> you, you coming on the blitz? <laughs> I don't care what they say. You remember that? Um, when I. Remember the Titans is the perfect football movie, man. There's always moments when um I can't remember the coach's name. He's he was the coach who was the white coach, and then he had to coach step Yost. back with Philip Yost. Yost. That's right, Yost. Yeah. Yost and Boom, right? Yost. He got mad. At, he was mad about something. He said, "Not another yard." Oh boy, I was like, "Yes, kill him." <laughs> like I feel like that's what Durkin was over there saying because I was watching the pregame footage, right? And Durkin was like smirking and smiling. Oh, it's great here, but I don't think like I think Durkin is a. I'm 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 gonna get my guys to go take 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 some hurt to these offensive players. I don't care that we're not supposed to be blitz, and I don't care that we're not supposed to be stunting. No, we're gonna do it. It felt like he was trying to get the better of the offense, which I, I like. I like. I felt like year for years under Gus, it was protect the offense because we need to make sure that they feel confident about what we're doing. Yeah, but then you know the season comes and we're setting career lows for Gus Malzahn offenses over the course of two or three years. So. Yeah, pressure test them early. And um, I was glad to see, again, I, I pointed this out, but PT missed the guy coming on the blitz. He didn't account for it. He, he didn't check out of it or anything. So that's how you figure out whether people are going to get better at what they do is you pressure them. You put them in these real game situations. The defensive talent looks great. And we, we never thought we didn't have defensive talent, especially in the back end, like you said, Dustin. It's just been depth. It's, it's been it's, depth up front. That's really yeah, concerned. depth up front has been where we've been lacking. Linebacker between the guys that stayed and the guys that they brought in, that's the most stacked position on the defense by far. I, I have no idea how they're going to get all these guys on the field. Like, seeing Woodyard make that tackle, like, that's been the knock is, okay, he might be a step too slow to really play, you know, in a pass-happy um game now like you know 20 years ago he'd have been the, the ideal linebacker but now he's not well okay well they, they like a safety he looked like yeah. he, was, he was built like a say i was like that's weird. that's kind of what you need in this in today's oh, game that's kind of what you need and he looks the part he looks the part. i'm happy for him i yeah, really am, I am happy too. for him because i was concerned about him going into the spring yeah but the pressure we saw though was from like uh quintrell and there's a couple other guys. Robinson, I heard his name a couple of times. We have players on defense, no matter what the position is. Basically, since definitely since Hugh Freeze got here um, with the class that they brought in at first, we got some some very good players. But the last three cycles, defensive back, we've been stacked. It's just which one of them are going to be the guys that stepped up. Like we mentioned, the the long defended ball by Kay and Lee. All right, well, who's our other corner? gonna be like who's gonna be locking down that spot i think it's just a matter of who not a matter of if we're gonna have the best talent to to really shape up to be sec starter type, uh, type players they are back there the only question of are they there is the front and we don't know that yet i don't know that we don't though i just don't think we necessarily know yet but i'm expecting i'm expecting the defense to hold us down similar to what they did last year and we weren't deep last year at all but game after game, our defense gave us chances to win games that our offense failed us at, and we lost a lot of games last year. I think it may be a better situation this year. Maybe the offense won't have to score 27 to win. Maybe we can get away with some 21 to 17, 21 to 13 type games. I think we might be in position to win those types of games. But, you know, the question is going to be, do you have the right guy quarterback? Do you trust him? And we'll just see. Well, can I make this point real quick, Be Will? You're in a you're in a tight game with Georgia. You throw a deep ball on the outside to Malcolm Johnson, who has no knock at Malcolm Johnson, but he ain't Cam Coleman. Cam Coleman makes that catch right there, and that game looks different. Yeah. 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 Sure. He's different. For sure. He's For different. Sure. sure. Even in the iron ball. <laughs> we, right. we, we had yeah. we had some opportunities there. Uh let's get to some of you guys' comments. Uh JT Martin says, Is this what uh actual hope looks like? Still not sold on Peyton Thorne. Cam Coleman is our savior. Obviously, a true number one running game. Meh, Towns, kicker one. Uh, LOL. <laughs> well, you know, it's it's really – I think everybody now with the positive hope, with the, with the rose-shaded glasses taken off, I think we can all accept, okay, let's just hope for the best from Peyton Thorne. 
But let's acknowledge that the wide receiver talent that's out there can and should make a difference for him or anybody that's going to be throwing it. I mean, Cam Cope, his ability to track the ball, and they, they said this. I think we get hyped up a lot about, oh, 6'3", 210, or this guy's going to be 6'4". Like we saw, what's his name? The really, really tall guy that came in here last year, he transferred out. He's oh, yeah. 6'6", 6'7". Six, yeah. six, six, uh, Marner. Marner. Yeah. Marner, Marner. Measurables are only half of the game. Somebody made this point to me where they talked about, oh, LeBron James is 6'8", and he's 260. Like, you know who else is that? Jeff Green. Can Jeff Green do the things that LeBron James could do? No, because they're not the same players. Cam Coleman's ability, he's, we've seen guys shaped like him, or even with similar uh, skill sets. He finds the ball quickly. Uh, his body finds the ball. It's almost like his body's doing his own thing. For all my DBZ fans out there, ultra instinct on location. He's not thinking about how to find the ball. He's just finding the ball. And he catches the ball. In spite of people being around him, on them, somebody blocking what should be his view of the ball, it does not matter. His tracking and locating of the ball is elite, which is why he could make those catches. Look, what you said, uh, Dustin, that play last year in the Georgia game, Malcolm Johnson, uh, appreciate everything he was here to do for us, but he could not go up and still maintain control of his body while locating the ball and securing it. He didn't have the ability to do that. Cam, Com Cam Coleman does that right now at 18. Yeah. It's uncanny. <laughs> it's, gonna, I'm gonna, I feel like we're going to be saying that all next year. Dude, he's only 18. Like This is crazy. Like He looks like a professional football player right no. now in skill, and with, with that skill by itself. like That's what I see pros do. It's uncanny. So for that reason, yes, Cam Coleman is probably the best recruit we've gotten here. And I don't want to put a time on it. Y'all know I'll say some wild stuff. I'll say like 70 years. But in a very long time... <laughs> Bo because Jackson, you can who? see it. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> Be exaggerating like a boat. Because you can see it, though. You you see the ability day one. It's not even day one. It's day zero, and we see it right now. We saw it in, in camp. They saw it in practice when he came at the end of last year. So, yes, to this. Towns, though. Towns is interesting because are you going to say no to, like, <laughs> what's his name? Uh, Mc, uh, Alex McPherson. Mc, yeah. McPherson. So, all right. McPherson's got to start, right? I mean. Right? Right? He's got to start. He's an awesome kid. He didn't miss a kick last year. Is that right? No. Yeah. Uh, he played right. well. He played well. <laughs> I don't know when our kick is going to the portal, man. It's just play them both. Play them both. I'm, I'm cool well, playing them who both. Can kick, hey, who can kick it into the end zone on kickoffs? Towns. Towns Magoo. So I so went the, to. It's problem solved. So Towns Magoo right. on kickoff. Perfect. Sent on field goals. Right? Yeah. I saw Magoo when Phoenix City played Auburn this year, the high school game, both were like undefeated. It was a big game in the state at the time, right? Now, Cam mm -hmm. Coleman goes off for four tutties, 278 yards or whatever the hell he did. Um, but before the game, Magoo's kicking from the 50. And I'm like, yo, who? I'm here to, <laughs> I'm here to see Cam. Who is this guy? Like, yeah. he, he's, you know, and he did it all game, just his kickoffs. He was putting them out the back of the end zone. Um, you know, it comes down to us at Ole Miss, and we ultimately win the battle. And then, like with Cam, man, I went to the uh, it was they played uh, Smith Station first game of the year, yeah. And you know, I was sitting there with Mike G, and first play of the game, Mike said we should probably pull our phone out in case he does something. Eighty yard touchdown while we're pulling our phones out, <laughs> right to the house, takes on the whole <laughs> Smith Station D, right, and then. You know, go back to the game later, like I said, when they play Auburn. And I'm sitting there watching it, like, in the mid-first quarter. And I'm just like, dude, this this guy would be the best receiver on Auburn's team right now Yeah. as a senior in high school. Yeah. It, it's just – it's, it's you know, like, I went to school with Trent Richardson. And he had a, he had a game where he had 21 carries for 440-something yards. Set, like, the Florida high school state record for rushing yards in a game. Mm -hmm. And you're watching it, and you're like, well – this, this is different, right? Like, this, <laughs> this guy's definitely going to hit in college. Like, mm -hmm. this is different. And this guy will play in the NFL. Um, it, it's just like that, man. It, it's something that Auburn has not ever had at the wide receiver position. It's – yeah. It's it's you can't you can't overhype it, guys, and, and and you saw it today, man. And it's gonna it's gonna train change this offense drastically. And then I see people in the comments talking about Perry Thompson. Yeah, Perry Thompson's that dude too. He, I mean, look, I'm not saying he's Cam Coleman. Cam Coleman is a different, a different species. Okay, never really seen anything like him. But Perry Thompson is, 
He, he's a guy. He and does. when you put him over there on the outside with him, might take him a couple games to kind of get into the system because he's not getting into fall camp and all that. Right. But big body guy that can move as well. Perry's like that deceptive speed. Like mm-hmm. you look up and all of a sudden he's he's done burnt the whole field. So and guys, don't forget yes, you you got you got Valdo lurking around at tight yeah, end. Man. So so if Thompson right. comes yeah. on, if he figures yeah. it out and comes on, you got Robert. And this is what Daniel Moultrie is here is is starting for uh, Cam Coleman, Perry Thompson, Jay Fair, and Robert Lewis. Obviously, we're going to be mm-hmm. playing a tight end in this offense. So I mean, obviously there may be some four receiver sets. I like this four receiver set. Mm-hmm. Right here, this looks good uh, for next year, but Valdo's around somebody, some, some um, guys. He's going to be lurking somewhere. So yeah. if 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 Thompson and Perry figures things out early, and you got Robert Lewis and Jay Fair, and you got the the passing game, you got some dudes to throw the ball to. You just got some dudes to throw the ball yeah. to. Uh, Stephen Allen says Robert Lewis was impressive. I was very impressed with him. Again, this is like consistent him. with some of the things we heard from him early on in spring camp. He can play outside. He can play inside. He has some pretty good breakaway. He can pretty speedy and open field. I think that was a really good pickup. I want to know what your guys' thoughts were. Uh, I know my G hasn't been really big on, on him, but Sam Jackson Jr., he had the orange, I mean, the yellow non-contact jersey on but he made some catches in open field as well thoughts about him guys i, I saw a couple of catches i didn't see um i think I, I was actually at a birthday party and my son my son his friend took him to so i'm watching on my phone like yeah, it's great <laughs> don't fall don't, don't fall okay so i didn't get to see every play in as much detail as i would have liked i did i was wondering what the yellow jersey was i was like what wide receiver can't get when i saw the jersey i was like that's got to be sam jackson so so now that makes sense to me i'm like oh okay um i i I can't say on what he did or did not look like because i saw him in motion a couple of times i didn't see him actually catch a pass so dustin i'm I'm gonna defer to you on how he looked as a wide receiver because i did not see him yeah i mean he looked okay i just you know i think that as we get into fall camp and like the Malcolm Simmons and the Perry Thompson's arrive, and I'm really, really high on Bryce Kane as well. Uh, Caleb Burton's been hurt for the majority of spring camp, but when you see Caleb, he didn't participate today. I don't think you see Caleb Burton step back in there. I just, I see Sam Jackson being more of a gadget. Listen, man, like we went out and got receivers for all four of those guys we brought in from high school this year are have, have bring different things to the game that Auburn has not seen in a long time all four of them are going to contribute by the end of their career in big ways so i you know if a, if a guy that's played qb for the last couple of years in the pac 12 if he can come in and make some plays at wide receiver cool I, you know i'm pulling for him obviously he's an auburn tiger but i don't i don't really have big expectations it, it feels like a wildcat gadget play type situation to me and right. and making yeah. peyton like getting peyton thorn you know his guy Right. It's it's the Robbie Ashford package is is really what I expect for him to fall into mm. as we get yeah. into the season for sure. Um, I I really do. Um, <clears throat> let's talk about and some of you guys in the comments. I'm I'm, I'm grabbing these randomly here. Um, thoughts about Cam Brown, guys? Which is what you what you see about him? He caught a few pl- uh, passes, made some plays. Uh, happy for this guy. Want to see more of him uh, as a receiver in this offense as well? Because when he came into Auburn, he came in with some fanfare, especially with what we were hearing about him in the summer, some of the plays that he, and some of the things that he was doing. Thoughts on Cam Brown? He, he looked better. He caught the ball better. And actually somebody, was it you that made the point, Dustin? He, or what did they say on the broadcast? He came back to the ball. Yeah, yeah that's what I said. I noticed he was, he was coming back and fighting for the ball versus he what he saw He came back Nashville. to the ball. Exactly. And we saw that from him last year a lot. Now, I do think at least some of this was – the passes that he was getting from Peyton Thorne, they're slow. So he's in position or he's about to be in position. And Peyton Thorne was often late last year waiting for guys to be wide open instead of throwing them open or throwing to where they were going to be because there was a little trust issue between wide receiver and quarterback last year. So because of that, Cam Brown is like, all right, I'm open. And he's waiting for the ball to get to him because wide receivers are itching to go that way if they're facing the quarterback. They're trying to get upfield to get to the end zone. It is tough to tell a guy by default when they're trying to go that way hey come back this way so you can catch the ball and go back that way when you have a very strong arm quarterback it's not something you have to worry about too much because he can zip it through 
defenders, pass defenders, and get it to you right, right where you need it to be. And that's the value of a strong arm, accurate quarterback, which is why once Hank Brown got in the game, Camden Brown looked different in that bowl game against Maryland. So I saw him work back to the ball, which is great because he still needs to be able to do that. He needs to know, hey, my quarterback might not zip this to me, or he might not throw it to the spot that's going to be best for me. Let me go and get this because in some sense as a wide receiver you can protect yourself if you go to the ball yes you're giving up yardage but if i go to the ball i'm three yards behind where i would have caught it or where the play was designed to go but now i have room i'm strong enough i'm fast enough to make this one guy miss who was trying to cover me and get some yardage and make it up he has been able to he was able to do that a little bit today if that's something that they've kind of programmed and installed into his game then that's going to be great for him i don't think he has the all natural uh tracking ability that cam coleman has he doesn't have that but what he can do he seems to be built like a terrell owens Mm. like a really big guy with really big strong hands he should be able to catch guys to, to, to catch balls and shed guys off to pick up yardage but he's got to get to the ball and catch it or hopefully you know we got a quarterback that's putting on the money so he can make some guys miss not necessarily shed guys get guys off stiff arm guys because he is that strong and that big to be able to do that if they can again coach him to do what he has to do to get the ball not just wait for everything to come to him it's going to be a huge plus he's going to probably still be fighting for some reps because again uh Perry Thompson is not a slouch. He's just not right. getting talked about because he's not here and we're not seeing him. Like that, That's really it. Dustin said that. He's almost just as good as Cam Coleman. I don't know where he finds those those reps. If if Perry Thompson is every bit as good as we expect, I, I, don't, I don't know how Cam Brown – he's got a head start, though. Listen, you got a head start. You're in the system. You made some catches in the spring. Keep it going, man, because I don't think you're going to hold Perry Thompson off too long. I'll go this route with it real quick. Rivaldo Fairweather, Camden Brown, Perry Thompson, and then the and then um uh Cam Coleman. Okay. In the red zone, I don't want to hear about not being able to score. Those are yeah. four guys you should be able to throw the ball up and get. Yeah. And all you need if Cam Coleman's gonna be this guy, if Perry Thompson can come in and contribute, you don't need Cam Brown to come out and give you seven, eight hundred yards, man. If Cam Brown gives you five touchdowns next year with four hundred and fifty yards to five hundred yards and he's a threat, they have to they have to look at him out on the outside and say, Okay, we have to cover this dude, we have to honor him. That opens up things for Jay Fair. That opens up things for Caleb Burton, Robert Lewis, and obviously Cam Coleman on the outside. Like if he can just come in and be a contributor, and it's a guy that you've heard for two staffs now at times have praised him in off seasons. Said, well, he had a good week. Remember when Harson was in here and they were they were putting up the on the boards the players of the day of the week, yeah, and, the week. and like and Cam Brown was getting them all the time. And yeah. then last year during camp, you heard Hugh say, "Hey, this Cam Brown, there's something there." So there's something there, and hey, maybe maybe his third year, man, it, it's starting to come out, and I'm pulling for it. And I hope it is, and it would help us a whole lot. It would open up a lot for the rest of the guys. B. Will's forehead says, if Perry Thompson is almost as good as Cam Coleman, how are people going to defend both? Can you imagine the joy this team will bring? (laughs) Well, the one person who can defend both, the quarterback, by missing him and not getting the ball to him on time. And yes, that can happen. Yes, that can. I watched Randy Moss in the Super Bowl with Tom Brady do almost nothing because the defensive line from the other team was Mm. just ravenous. You got no time to throw. How are you going to get it out there? What are you going to do if I'm just blowing up your right tackle all game? And once the quarterback is under pressure, yes, it may be easy. To, hey, I got time. Those guys are even kind of open. Yeah, but what if you don't have time? That That's that's who defends them. But to your point, uh, my forehead, if we if it doesn't really matter who the quarterback is, if they have time to throw, because unlike last year, this is not I definitely need to see the wide receiver open because I don't trust him. I think you already saw people are going to throw at Coleman. They're just they're gonna throw it to him. And he's probably gonna catch it unless it's an awful throw. And that does change the math for the quarterback. Okay, I don't need to see the guy anymore. I just need to launch it. And man, we we'll we'll be in good shape. If think that we 
even we just talking about Cam Coleman, not even Tom. We're not even Man, talking about Perry Thompson. Perry yet. going, Perry going E. That's who's going to E. It, they're both going to E. I, it's going to no, be no, no. I know, but I'm saying if you're a defense and you're worried about Cam Coleman, you know, yeah. you're looking for number eight every time they line up. All that means is that the other guy line up opposite of Cam Coleman is going to have a field day, right? <sighs> especially, especially if the weakest link of their cornerbacks is on Perry Thompson. That's not good. That's yeah. just not good. So it's, 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 it, yeah. it, 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 it makes it makes you excited about what this wide receiver core can can become. I'll it, tell you the kind of athlete that Perry Thompson is. So Bryce Kane is. I mean, you, everyone heard about his speed, right? Like, I'm sure you've seen it at this point. That mm-hmm. that speed is elite. Is probably him and J.C. Hart right now, if I had to guess, for fastest on the team. And J.C. had a nice play. Um, so, Baker's playing Foley. And Bryce Kane played at Baker. Perry Thompson plays at Foley. Baker – or Bryce Kane's toasting. He's toasting Foley, right? He's getting – he's blowing off the top off the D every single time. They stick Perry over there on the other side of free safety. Perry strive for strive with Bryce, knocks the play down – knocks the ball down on third down. <laughs> I mean, he's – Perry Thompson, a freaking athlete, man. Can't wait till he's he on this team. We don't have anybody who can cover this guy. Thompson, get in yeah. there. <laughs> oh, Perry, yeah, Perry. Perry don't come off the field for Foley last year. He did not. He was kick, kick off, kick return, wow. safety, linebacker, running and back. With the, with the type of team Foley was, yeah, I'm pretty sure they used him for a lot. It wasn't yeah, like it wasn't like he was at Thompson bro. and he was a special. Like, no, you play. No, you do everything we need you to do. Third and one, halfback dive. We're handing the ball off to Perry Thompson. Yeah. <laughs> uh Eddie James says, uh, who's gonna have the replay of the game and win? Guys, do you know about that? Yeah, I gotta go do the capture. Right I, I gotta do the capture from um from the beginning. Like I said, I went in home when the game started. So I'm gonna get that queued up and my guess is I go have it ready for you guys sometime next week. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Get it, you know, break it down, do what we do, as you can expect if you're a, a, a insider. Well no, it's not insider anymore. What's it called? Patron. Patron. I almost forgot. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> you brought back yeah. the old term. Yeah, I know, right? Uh, but that's the film review. He, if I guess, if you miss the game, just straight um, up replay. ESPN app. Just go to yeah, right you got to you got to yeah. go to ESPN app. You got to have and, ESPN Plus though to watch yeah. the replay, or you got to have a cable subscription. But you can't you rewatch have a cable. It. Subs- Do they have replays on SEC like the? Mm-hmm. Okay. Anything that has been shown, you can just yeah. go to replay on the day yeah. that it came up, and you should be able to rewatch it. Uh. James Barnett says, fellas, a four-year starter can't miss a wide open 87 in the back of the end zone, but yet make the throw to Fairweather knowing he wasn't going to score. Hey, man, listen. Um, Hugh Freeze seems very determined to play Peyton Thorne, to roll with him. Whatever comfort having an older guy who you know exactly what you're going to get from him, that really gives coaches comfort. They love it. They talk about it all the time. Um there's a trade-off there between ceiling potential and comfort when it comes to expecting who to play. I would base if we had to go off today, I put Hank Brown in there and say, "Man, we got four games for you to find it before we get into a quality opponent. Have at it." And that's what I would do. But I'm not a head coach. Um, I'm not even a coach. I'm not even a kind of coach. So those are the decisions he he gets paid to make I'm not a head coach <laughs> um, those are the decisions that Hugh Freeze gets paid to make he seems to be comfortable riding with Peyton Thorne I do believe that there is going to be some if Hugh Freeze had the exact same team as last year and started last year over but he was the only person controlling and running the offense we probably do end up a win better at least a win better um, some of the things where we suffered last year, I don't know if it's enough to overcome a 21 point loss to New Mexico State. You know, some things weren't just one or two plays that needed to happen for us to win the game. But I think it's about his comfort with what he knows he can get out of Peyton Thorne and with improved wide receiver play. So, hey, if, if hopefully he's right. Like, I, I'm not high on Peyton Thorne if that isn't clear, but. I still want us to win. I don't want Peyton Thorne to look bad so I can say I told you so. I want to be wrong and us win eight, nine games with him looking better than I thought he was going to look. That's the best case scenario. But does he still have the holes in his game? Yes. I think he is what he is. I don't think we should expect drastic improvement from Peyton Thorne. If anybody out there is expecting that, I don't think you should. That's not what you should expect. You should expect 
game plans to look better and make more sense. You should expect wide receivers to make better plays. And maybe because of that, Peyton Thorne will throw the ball instead of holding it a little too long on a couple plays. But if you're expecting him to start finding guys who were open <laughs> – because he no, that's not gonna happen. That's not gonna happen. You expect some more arm strength? No, that's not gonna happen. I think he is what he is, and we just have to hope that the coach and wide receiver talent compensates for what he is. I just need him to pick up a blitz um, mm. and just stare him in the face. If he does that mm. one thing, um, but I, I I just think with Hugh Freeze, I think that Hugh Freeze is trying to get to year three with Walker White. Mm. Yeah. I really think that's the, that's why he didn't go to the portal. He, he believes in building this thing with high school players. And yes, Peyton Thorne is a portal guy, but again, Hugh Freeze has been really vocal about how much he's not the biggest fan of the transfer portal and building his team with transfer portal players. I know Hank Brown is someone that he got out of high school. I just think the future is Walker White. And unless Hank Brown is able to show that he's able to overtake or get close to Peyton Thorne, it's looking like the Peyton Thorne show as far as I'm concerned. Uh, And again, I don't know what kind of leash Peyton Thorne goes into fall with, into the season with. That's also something to consider. But whoever the starter is, you have four games at home to put this conversation to bed. You do. Um, If I'm Hank Brown, I mean, you still got some work to do. Uh, in fall camp, but I just think Hugh Freeze is trying to get to year three, and what what better way to do that with someone who has experience, someone who has played a lot of ball? I get it. A lot of people are skeptical of Peyton Thorne, but that just seems to be the plan as of now. Yeah. Obviously, things can change in the season, but again, Peyton Thorne's got some he got some layup of games to really separate himself. Yeah. If he doesn't, we have some close games at home in September. Probably gonna be some. It's probably gonna be some some concerns moving into the difficult part of our schedule where we're on the road in October. Yeah. So it's interesting to see. Um, let me grab some more comments. Let's see here. Jaquan Grant says Walker White is not ready yet. Understandable because he's a freshman. Just wait your turn, young buck. Yeah, he's not. He's not ready yet. Yeah, yeah for sure. I, you know, I know that people want to hop on that train you can you get the four-star quarterback to sign and obviously he loves being at Auburn and it gets all hyped up and everything and he's got all the arm talent in the world and I think you saw the day like Hugh Freeze has said he's gonna need a little bit of time but all the talents there man and and Walker is probably the guy the most that a, a quarterbacks not being live effects right Like his skill set is the most of breaking. I think some of those he probably would have been able to break and turn into first downs and make big runs. Um, And then how much does that affect his game as well? But yeah, great kid. He's doing all the things, all the right things off the field. All those young receivers that you saw Cam Coleman making those plays today. Well, guess what? He's working on, he's working out with Walker. They're, they're going hard at it. All those guys believe in Walker White. So, mm-hmm. and then I agree with what you were saying, dude. Well, you got talking about trying, just trying to get to or see, I'm trying to just get to year three, right? And I see some people in the comments talking about Chris Todd. I, I think that's a reachable ceiling for Peyton Thorne. That 2009 Chris Todd ceiling, I think he can get there. It wasn't great. It was like, it was like 21 touchdowns to six picks or something like that. Well, seven games. Yeah. He, mm-hmm. Yeah. And he got the, yeah, you can get there, man. Eight, if, eight games. He got won the bowl game, went eight yeah. and five. If we got that win record and then had that kind of like gear from the quarterback, I would say, okay, cool. And then, like you said, let's get ready for Walker White to get him ready. Um, And I think that's attainable. I don't have, like B. Will, I don't have crazy high expectations for Peyton Thorne. It kind of is what it is at this point. But can we scheme and put enough pieces around him to at least get it to a competent level to where what happened versus New Mexico State and some of those other games? And then that game went on him. We got killed in the trenches. But I'm just saying, like, to get to the point to where there's competent, I mean, 1,700 yards, uh, you come on. We know can't we got to be better that. than that. We can't do that. We know we got to be better than that. Can't do that. Um, Chris Todd was slinging the two. Like he was he slinging. Was. He he was slinging them. He broke some records actually. You know, before yeah. we really got into the era of 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 what college football became in terms of offense. Right. But he that O line, the O line was pretty was pretty good, right? Like they were yes. creating holes for Ben Tate. Ontario McCaleb was doing some things off the speech, uh, the speed sweep, and all that. Yeah. And right. like so, it kind of created it. There was an atmosphere, and there was enough guys. On, those guys weren't like great on the outside, 
but there were some playmakers out there that could make plays on third. He had enough around him. We got the most out of Chris. Gus Malzahn got the most out of Chris Todd. He did. If Hugh Freeze can do that with Peyton Thorne this year, I think we'll be okay. Uh, thoughts on Rico Walker? Saw him get out there. He looked like a tank. Yeah. <laughs> Crazy. 17. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, big, big boy. He <laughs> like a tank. He can move too. Goodness yeah, gracious, yeah, big. So hey, we yeah. we got we got the options, man. The 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 skill position talent is is crazy. We are exceptionally talented at running back, at wide receiver, uh, offensive line. I I if we were able to run with what we had last year, I think our offensive line has improved. There, there's no way we won't be able to match people this year. And to your point, see, like, who, how are they going to guard the guys we got? You just just get the players out of the box for us with Perry and Coleman. Mm. You, you, what, what's, what's that run game matchup look like if you got to vacate the box because we got crazy uh, athletes at wide receiver? Like, this, this could be sneakily of really good offense. It's all it's going to be all about what can you get out of the quarterback? Can you just get him to play par? Can we can we play par at quarterback? Then then we could win eight games. If he becomes a good manageable, you know, a game manager. Right. If he becomes good at man, just managing the game. Mm-hmm. Is that is, is is that enough to turn this offense around, not to where it's elite, but to where it's a serviceable offense to where the defense does its job and plays a tough game front seven. Auburn's in most of not all of the games that they play in next year. Yeah, they are. Mm-hmm. Yep. He just he just needs to be an extra coach on the field and making the right reads, making the right decisions. He doesn't have to be a game breaker. But again, he can get loose with his feet and make some plays. Right. If he just makes the right read, read after read. I think that, that that's I think that's what Hugh Freeze is hoping out of him going into year two. Right. Is that he can now that this is more becoming more of a read RPO offense becomes it begins to look more like what Hugh Freeze's offense has looked like in the past. If he can make those correct reads and get comfortable in the offense, I think this is this is what Hugh Freeze wants to ride it out into year three. Mm. So we'll we'll just see how that plays out. Uh, Daniel Moultrie asks, guys, can we get to watch the film for a day, snap by snap? You know Ike's on it. You know Ike's on it, Daniel. So so keep it locked. Ike's probably going to let us know. He may confirm tomorrow what his plans are with that. Uh, but, yes, we will be definitely doing a watch the film, or Ike will be doing a watch the film. You know as long as there's some Auburn action, Ike's going to review it. So uh, don't don't worry about that. Greg Wheatley says, y'all heard Free say that Nix was calling plays. I thought Free said he was going to call plays. I begin to hear more about as spring was going on if Derek Nix was going to actually be calling some of the offense, which not mad at it, not mad at it. I think this speaks to the fact that Hugh Freeze actually trusts right. Derek Nix. Um, right. Derek Nix understands Hugh Freeze. You can kind of have that dynamic when you have an OC who, who understands what you're trying to do. And it's something that Hugh Freeze himself is comfortable with. I don't think Hugh Freeze was ever comfortable last year. So it was tough for him to completely stay off the reins. And it's, it's tough for him now because he's an offensive coach, right? He's, right? He mentioned even today when we got into the two-minute, I was off, I was in Nix's ear giving some suggestions. He's going to do that. Um, I just think this offense now resembles what he normally runs. So I think this is an opportunity for Nix to grow as a play caller. So uh, as long as it works out, I'm happy for I'm happy for Nix. I'm happy for all parties involved. I don't know if you guys have any thoughts on that. Well, I want yeah, to ask just, y'all. Well, well, I could just real quick, Dustin. He said when he first got here and he he brought in um, Montgomery, he said, "Well, my terminology has been out there, and people kind of know what I do and what I call and whatnot. So this is going to help us not be as easy to read." Okay. Well, he says he's going back to his terminology, but the people in the conference who know him are still around. So, like, what was that? Just a way to sell Montgomery as far as the terminology thing for last year? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. I don't I don't know if you I don't know if you freeze really want it. <laughs> Philip Montgomery. I really don't. I don't know. Like I I I I I you know, I don't have any proof of that. I just think he this is Hugh Freeze doing what Hugh Freeze probably already wanted to what he wanted to do in year one anyway. 
just yeah. just a hunch, but I don't know. My theory on that, C Dub, has always been I think that he came into Auburn. I think that he looked around at the roster. I think that he looked at the changing landscape of college football with the portal and the NIL, and he said, Whoa. I might not be able to do everything I, the way I was able to do it at the SEC level, the way I was at Ole Miss. Maybe I am going to have to step back and really be involved in this a lot more than I ever have had to be involved in before. And he probably thought, like, I'm going to go get an experienced guy in Philip Montgomery that's coached a lot of offense over his years, and I can bring him in, and he'll be able to run it, and it'll be good. And then mm. it just deviated so far from his system to where – and now to your point about Derek Nix, let's say Derek Nix is calling the plays. I tend to believe that game one, Hugh Freeze will be calling the plays. Whether he's saying that publicly or not, I don't know. I certainly want him to be, right? Mm -hmm. um, but I think today was more of just like, it's a spring game. I'm going to let you do your thing. I'm going to let you call the plays. But I definitely think that if Nix is calling some plays in the game, Hugh Freeze will feel a lot more comfortable sliding in and overriding because they had that relationship versus him and Philip Montgomery had never coached before. And they probably had those discussions before Knicks came over, right? Like, hey, if you're calling some plays in the game and I don't like the way it's going, I'm coming in, I'm taking over. And they had that history. And I think, it, you know, hopefully it'll all work out and kind of look like what Hugh Freeze's offenses have all looked like pre-Auburn. Phil Montgomery was a head coach prior to coming to Auburn. So getting right. two head coaches – to get on the same page with different type of philosophies on offense, it's going to be tough. It's going to be tough in terms of calling on, on making game day plans and calling the game on game days. Um, Brian Dawkins says the QB situation is still in trouble. I can't see us winning no more than six games. And that is a stretch. I, I, I can see us winning more than six games. It honestly, out of the gate, we should be four and all. Let's, let's make that clear. We should be four and all out of the gate cal was a bad team last year and they i don't think they got better i know they had a lot of turnover because they lost at least one quarterback and a couple other players but that's a bad team they that's lost gonna a dude come. that helped them get back in the game against us okay yeah just fyi because the, the, their 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 other qb was struggling against yeah, our defense bad. sam jackson came in and actually made it a lot more uncomfortable but go ahead yeah we we should be four no arkansas is a poorly resourced team that does not have the talent to to keep up with us okay where they had to kind of like straw vote to keep their coach and decide not to let them go like when it if you're gonna play a team that who was like oh no should we get rid of this guy and you get to keep the guy hey man that's still a bad team the fact that they even had to think about it, that's a bad team four and oh should be what we are at the end of september maybe five and no i don't know what oklahoma has but if I'm going to give you 4 and 0 to start the year, okay? You can win 2 games in your last 8. Uh, that means I need you to go 2 and 6 down the stretch. I don't think that's a tough ask for the talent that we have on this team. Go 2 and 6. Yes, inside the SEC where it's talented and everybody is is talented as well, you can go 2 and 6 in the SEC. I think that should be a gimme. I think our quarterback play would be the biggest holdup, but also some of the talent that we are we got to get a glimpse of may be able to get us over the hump. You got Vandy really? and ULM. That should be six right there, right? You got I don't know anymore. You got I was, oh, I was, after, the, I was after the Mexico State game, so I don't I don't That's right. Vandy's got the they got the Auburn killer. I don't know. I don't know. I'm nervous. I forgot. Oh uh, hell uh <laughs> And the coach, Jerry Kill, went over there to tell him how to deconstruct this. I don't know, man. I don't know. Maybe nothing's going to give me in the SEC anymore except for Arkansas. So. Yeah, we've won six. We've won no more than six games three years in a row. So, I mean, I'm, Brian, this isn't that far off. Yeah. And we're going to be super young. So, I don't have you – know, It's tough. I, it's going to be tough, yeah. dude. We can win two more games, oh. but it's 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 it, this is a deceptively – like the next – after Arkansas, the next three games is going to be – very tough. Oklahoma comes into Auburn. Auburn could win that, but then you go on the road against Georgia. All of a sudden, Missouri is like, that's a tough road game. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, at Kentucky, that's not an easy game there against well, Kentucky. Who's their quarterback, though? Didn't they get Vandegrift from uh, Georgia? Uh, to my Kentucky? Yeah. I don't know. I think I think they did. I think they got Brock Vandegrift. 
mm. back there vying for the starting job and, and lost to uh, um, the guy who started at Georgia. So we we don't know what Kentucky's going to be. If I I would bank on that being an advantage us because Mark Stoops yeah A and M A and M coming in town. Don't That's know what right. they're going to look like. They so I mean, they're, they're, we just don't know. I mean, again, Auburn could be Auburn can be coming. We just never know what what teams will look like in in November and it's April, right? <laughs> so it's just hard to tell uh, with that. But um, guys, I know you had any more thoughts before we get out of here. I mean, again, I think this. I think you freeze did exactly what he wanted to do. Um, have a nice day. Oh. The QB that I think a lot of people are excited or interested about in Auburn, and they actually suit up. Four-star QB uh, Hussan Longstreet uh, was reported in Auburn today. Uh, that has to be a positive sign. I think he makes a decision in, what, the 14th? 15th? 14th. April 14th. So let's, you know, I'm, I'm curious to see what, what comes about that. Auburn recruiting appears to be picking up a lot of steam. Um, not that it was ever – uh, off to a slow start uh, for the 2025 cycle. But uh, again, this was the type of weather, the type of day you wanted to have if you were Hugh Freeze, especially from yeah. the recruiting front, mm-hmm. especially as, as to conclude the spring. Um, I'm curious to see how where things go from here. But any closing thoughts, guys? None? Yeah, I just, I mean, I mean, it's not, it's a spring game, right? So I'm not, right. I don't, I don't overreact to it. I don't underreact to it. You know, things to be excited about. Look at what you got out there on the skill positions. Cam, like yeah. you've heard, you've heard Cam Coleman, you've heard it, and then you got to see it with your own eyes today. The hype is real. You got yeah. to see a lot of these guys. You got to see DJ Barber, who made a game, a state championship game-winning tackle versus a QB that we're after in KJ Lacey. Don't think he'll come to Auburn. I'm with see you on the Long Street thing. I think that's the guy you need to look out for. Um, but makes that play in high school, wins the state championship, making that play. Then he comes out here to Auburn. First time seeing him on the field, he makes that play. There's positive things to take away from it. There's negative things to take away from it. Obviously, it's super hard to judge because you can say, well, our defense looked good, but our offense looked bad. Like, it's 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 very it's, – it's a spring game. And, you know, I, I see a lot of the reactions online and everything about, oh, we look terrible or, or we look great. Nah, it looked like a spring game, man. So yeah. let's just kind of let's let's be reasonable about this. We're still going to have another portal period open up, and there's going to be guys that come and go. Let's see what we look like then. Right, right. Um, I'm curious but, to see about that. Yeah. Overall, man, I like I don't take anything like crazy out of today. You know, it was things I liked, some things I didn't like. It's not an end all be all. And follow us over at the Up Tempo Podcast, man. I'm not worried. And to your point, we didn't turn the ball over. Yeah. Frazier did put the ball on the ground, but unfortunately, uh, the gods blew it out of bounds. Um, <laughs> but we didn't turn the ball over. There wasn't anything egregious out there. No one got seriously injured. Um, Blockman was able to walk off on his own strength. So that was positive. So yeah. all in all, we we did what we needed to do today. Get out there, show a little something, get off the field and get ready for summer. So. Uh, before we get out of here, y'all, do us a favor and head over to Bet US. 24 hours issue yeah, payouts, guys. 125% sign up bonus for up to 2500 Use the link that we got in the description. They have exceptional 24 hour customer service. Shouts out to Bet US being a sponsor of the War Report. Also, guys, go grab yourself. A membership, five nine nine a month to get a green name, become part of the gang. Ike's going to be doing the film review, so you definitely want to check that out. Get access to that. He's going to be breaking it down play by play, highlighting certain players. Obviously, there was no names on the back of jerseys, so if you wasn't looking at the roster actively, you don't know who was who. Ike will break all that down for you in the film review. You definitely want to check that out. Also, before you get out of here, guys, please share this video, smash the like button, and subscribe if you're new to the channel. Follow us on social media, Twitter X, IG at The War Report, TW Report for TikTok. Head over to the Uptempo Podcast. I'm pretty sure they're going to be having amazing content oh, yeah. post-spring. Check them out. Thanks to Dustin Tomorrow for coming night. through. Tomorrow night going live, baby. Thank you, Dustin, for coming by, hanging out with us, giving us your thoughts. And thank you for hanging out with us post-spring. We will be back here tomorrow on the weekend tailgate. Ike and Mike will be here to give us their thoughts Until then, enjoy the rest of your Saturday. And as always, we're Eagle.
Where you go? Well, damn.